this is a um, three day um, update on 30 inks 30 days so day uh, 12 no day 13 excuse me day 13 through yeah day 13 through day um, 15 and so we last looked at uh, Sailor 123 for this drawing. The next drawing is Sailor um, Nico Igani. Sailor, it's a Sailor Manio ink. And they are very similar, <laughs> especially when written in um, on on like non on like regular paper, like come away river paper. So if you're looking for a if you're interested in both of these, here let me um. see if I have a good example so you can see yeah so on my day 12 right here here is the sailor one two three and here is the sailor manio Nico Ganan Nico Igani um, so really, really similar to each other. Um, yeah. So if you want something a little more dusty, Sailor 123 is the way you should go. If you want something a little more vibrant, it does have less multi-tonal shading on the Tomoe River, but, um... Go for the sailor. Here, here's, here's, they're they're pretty close. So, go for the sailor manio ink if you want something more like periwinkle. It's a beautiful periwinkle ink. I like. I love writing with it, especially with a broad nib. It's a little pale for a fine nib. I can, I can read it. But um, I could see where people would have a hard time reading it. Um, this is my drawing. It was done using my Sailor, uh, not Sailor, not at all, my Lamy um, let me make sure it's in frame. My um, Lamy All Star Vibrant Pink. This is my first, first ever fountain pen, um, and I got this one on sale, and I bought the ink with it because I'm like, I know I'm gonna want pink ink, and I was right. <laughs> pink ink is my is like one of my favorites to write with, and um, this made me fall in love with fountain pens. Although it is not my favorite brand. <laughs> um, I, I really love my Twisby Eco writing experience. So I have a lot more Ecos now. Um, this is my only Lamy. I do want to get try getting some of the other nibs for it. Um, that's one thing I liked about it is like, oh, I can change nibs. So that's great because I do like a nib change. With doing 30 ink 30 days and trying them out in so many different pens, because I only have so many pens, and I have other pens that use capillary action, like a Rapidograph technical pen, that I'm like, it's close enough to a fountain pen. Even though it's not technically a fountain pen, that I'm like, it's capillary action, I can put fountain pen ink in it. 
I'll use it for 30 inks 30 days because I planned on drawing anyways. So anyway, um, really pretty ink, very soft, not necessarily something I always want to draw with. Again, this is one that I like to use in art as like a um, pop of color more so than an overall drawing. Um, but I went back to my chest hair licker guy and he is checking out, he's like hanging out with his cat who is um, cleaning himself on his chest and you know, he's telling the cat that you get me. So, cause he gets him. And then, you know, the, a fun thing is they're like also the same shape. <laughs> And then I did the background framing the same shape. Um, and then I used a ruler, which I normally don't do when I use pen and ink for my background. And um, eh, I don't know if I, I may not do it again. I don't know. I tend to like to be looser with my drawings in general. It's a little stiff. So this was day 13. Nice pastel. And day 14, working through my purple inks now with, um, oh, I forgot, hang on. <laughs> I forgot to show you. This is what it looks like on watercolor paper. And then here it is on, um, the Tomoe River paper and the pink will get left behind with um so the blue moves more than the pink does in the ink so and there's another Tomoe swatch on the back so our next ink is a diamine anniversary um, 150th anniversary color, Lilac Night, and it is a beautiful um, blue-purple, so this would be more of a lilac or a violet than a purple. I've um, been hearing people <laughs> not necessarily know what color to call purple. Technically, um, purple is warmer. Uh, leans more towards red so like this would be violet and this would be purple underneath here so technically you can call it either one <laughs> um, and that's like hue color or hue name so hue here's a bit of color theory for everybody hues are like your broad names, like blue. Blue is a name of a hue. Um, although <laughs> turquoise <laughs> would be a color of blue, the hue. So that would be a color name. So color names are more defining than hue names. Hues are your like Roy G. Biv, and colors are like pinging into certain tones and aspects of a color. So like emerald green versus like spring green, in your mind, they may come up to be very different colors than just if I said just green. So um, getting my nerd uh, color nerd on. <laughs> <laughs> for you all, which I love color. <laughs> Big nerd about it. Um, this is a, so this was, this is Diamine um, Lilac Night. It looks beautiful in an extra fine nib. It looks really nice in a broader nib. Um, it's very dark, so it can read like close, it, it, it can be a professional color. Um, I used my 0.5 Rapido Graph um, pen, and I still have some ink in it. 
to make this flying cat which I forgot the D&D &D monster name for flying for a flying cat um, I think it's a Tras. no that could be way wrong anyway if you know what it is go ahead and put it down in the comments um, but this is kind of a cross between my cats uh, Jack and Moonshadow. Moonshadow is the black and fluffy. Jack is um, a white short hair with his little gray mohawk. And um, they're both older cats and Jack is having some health problems where we need to give him some meds now. So like, you know, they're just, right now my kitty babies are on my mind. So, because I love them because I'm normal. So this was day 14. Um, starting starting to get like the, I don't know what to draw. I don't feel like drawing. Um, and that really hit hard today <laughs> with this humongous drawing. Here's like the paper plane and here's the drawing. I'm going to use the other part of this paper um, later. <laughs> but today's drawing are little monsters that make your shoes smell. So they just love getting in shoes and making them stink. So if you see them, you'll want to um, like knock them out of your shoes and get rid of them before your shoes permanently stink. So they hang out in closets, under beds, in little cubbies. And this ink is also from Diamine. Oh, that's not it's not all gray. It is Diamine Eclipse, which is like this deep indigo. And this was a sample that I got from Diamine because I ordered a certain amount from that I can't remember what how much you have to order. But if you order a certain amount of um, ink from Diamine, they will send you a free five milliliter sample. And this thing is like chock full. This is a clear plastic <laughs> little bottle, but um, I couldn't tell that until I've used enough ink out of it. And there is a lot of ink in here. So um, if you're looking for a good deal on dye mine inks even though they're already a really good deal and you're not tied to wanting to support a um, local business that sells dye mine or dye mine you can um, order directly from their website even with the VAT tax it still comes out to be and shipping it still comes out to be cheaper than ordering it from a like US retailer so, um, yeah, <laughs> and you know, you can get a little sample. So their website is not necessarily like the most um, aesthetically pleasing, but it, it looks like a manufacturer's website, um, which I don't mind, you know, I get my, I need to get my stuff. Um, but it's really pretty, it has a slight like black sheen to it on like the Tomoe and just this it's it's black but it's not black it's a really nice ink to write with it's professional it looks black it's it's just a nice ink and it's been a nice change <laughs> um, drawing with black or an almost black has just been a really nice change from all of the pastels um, just because when I draw, I love that high contrast, but when I write, it, I, I'm fine either way. Like, I, I don't necessarily have to have high contrast when I write. Um, today's pen is my Pen BBS 267 in clear, and I love how long this pen is. I don't mind a long pen, probably because I'm used to a paintbrush. So, um, for me, I don't mind it because I will, like, move my hand 
wherever <laughs> um, it needs to go. So, but yeah, even for writing, I don't find this too long. It doesn't bother me. But I could see for a lot of people it being like way too long. Um, it's not like back weighted or anything. Like it, it wants to sit on my hand, <laughs> on my fingers, not like, so it's not back weighted. Um, I personally like to post uh, my pens, so what I don't like is that I, it's not postable. Um, but I, I deal with it because I also like love this like super long, like to me this is like a really elegant form. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's it for 30 inks 30 days. What I have been a bit more excited about is I ordered some rule pens, which were new to me even though they've been around for like ever and like a long time um, like technical pen so like drafting pen and these are a dip or you load them with a paintbrush and you can get super fine lines and these really expressive marks um, this was just me playing around and not like knowing what I was doing and I really am happy with this painting, which also gets like, it's really nice <laughs> when stuff like that happens as an artist, but at the same time, it's like, man, why can't this happen when I want it to? Here I was playing with it a bit more. Um, this one I like as well. It's a good composition, but I, I think I like this. I think I like this one more to a degree um, here but you can see I'm like starting to get more and more control over the mark making um, it's really fun to play with like inks that are non fountain fem, prim, fountain pen friendly with because I just I love ink like all kinds of ink it's a wonderful medium and um, you can put paint in them if you, um, depending on its viscosity, if it's a high viscosity, yeah, a really thick paint, um, it will not flow through. So, but if you have a lower viscosity or very thin paint, no, I have those flipped in my head. Anyway, if you have a fluid paint, so like this is um, acrylic, uh, golden acrylics, fluid acrylics, and um, they are, they're too, too thick, too viscous. So you'll need the high flow acrylic from them, which comes in a different bottle type. Or you add some water to change its viscosity. Um, but this was too thick. It did not want to flow out nice. But you can make your own inks with gum arabic or like shellax or animal glue. Um, water. And pigment or dye. Um, fountain pens are dye based and there are a lot that have <laughs> dyes because I, I do dye yarn um, and some some of the inks I'm like I know that dye. <laughs> I'll look at them like I know what dyes in you. <laughs> um, so yeah. So these were playing with some of the liquid watercolors and some India inks as well as some Sumi inks. I love these black Sumi inks and these are from like Daiso so they're like really cheap. <laughs> so loading it being really heavy-handed 
is nice. Here I started to mix water. I can just dip this in water and drag it over the ink and let some release. And um, this is just like where the ink would get stuck and then I would just tap to make these really nice marks. So this is, these are really fun. And you can get super fine lines with it as well. Let me see. I'm pointing to one right here. So you can get a very fine line as well as these really broad strokes. Um, really cool tool, inexpensive. I got these off of like a whole set of these less than $20 off of Amazon. Um, the handles are not the like sturdiest <laughs> and they can be replaced. But you know, I could put in a nicer like wooden handle or something if I wanted to. They, they function for me. Um, because I tend to hold them, uh, you, you hold them very different from a regular pen, too, for your mark making. Let me, let me, you know what, I have all that negative space over top of my stinky feet monsters with their stinky feet. So we will get out some ink. Um, actually, we'll try it with some fountain pen ink because I haven't loaded one of these with fountain pen ink yet. Let's go with this little guy. So you can change the um, thickness and flow by turning the screw. And that opens up these tongs at the bottom. And these you can make yourself as well. Um, there is a really great article on or uh, entry on the Fountain Pen Network. Um, if I find the link I will post it below of um, a guy who makes his own and This also makes a really great eyedropper pen, which I think I mentioned back when I had it, the green in it. Um, so. Make a fool out of your pen, don't you? There we go. I really like drawing back into the ink that it leaves. I'm going to, and like drawing out um, marks. So it is a fun tool. Mm -hmm. And with like the thinner inks, I, I did dip with the um, thinner inks, especially if I didn't have like an eyedropper <laughs> in it. So, and that was fine to load it up. If it's too liquidy, it'll just fall out the end. <laughs> so it'll just, yeah. There are some um, videos on YouTube about using these and like how to use them technically. I, again, I'm using them for playing around, mark making. These papers, I'm thinking, I don't like these papers as pieces. 
So I am thinking I might cut them up and like stitch them together in different ways. That is my like knee jerk reaction with these uh, pieces of paper or to like sculpt with them in some way. So anywho, I um, hope you're having a wonderful day and um, tomorrow is day 16. We'll be working with a new ink and yeah and hopefully um, I'm getting out of the house a bit for work tomorrow not just working from home and hopefully that will get some of my creative juices flowing because they are a little right now and yeah have a wonderful day evening whatever bye